EAS Hosting is Expo's latest project and promises hosting for Expo Router projects, API routes and server actions. Let's check out what it is and how it works. What's up React Native friends, Simon here from galaxies.dev. You know, we can build universal apps in many ways, but ultimately the Expo way of doing things will win. Today, Expo takes another step in that direction by releasing a hosting service. And while this doesn't sound too exciting, there's more to this announcement than just hosting. EIS hosting is made specifically for React Native Expo projects with Expo Router. Where you previously needed a janky custom solution to deploy API routes, you now have the best possible solution right at your fingertips. And while RSCs are still only in developer preview at the moment, this hosting is clearly made for hosting your server components in the near future. But let's not talk too much upfront and instead explore the new features of EIS hosting in a real Expo project. All right, here I'm in a simple Expo router project. You can see I'm using the standard tabs default. The only thing I changed is I added two API routes. So we got a build stuff to test. So we got a hello route and we got a one crash route that we will be able to take a look at. Now, you should technically be able to test this yourself. Simply install the latest version of the EAS CLI and make sure you are logged in. You can then follow this up by first of all, making an export for the web using npx expo export dash dash platform web. This will uh, export your project uh, based on your app JSON settings for the web. So right now I have it set to static, which is not too helpful if I have uh, API routes. So let's instead use server in here. That will make sure that my API routes are bundled as well as you can see right here. After that command, we can run EAS deploy. And if you haven't connected your application to EAS yet, it will ask so now. So do you want to set this up? Uh, yes, please do so. Uh, this will create a new project in my Expo account. Let's take a look at it. Here it is. Choose a preview URL for your project. I will just like set it to hosting app.expo. So this is the URL that your Expo uh, web preview or your hosted application will automatically get. We're uploading. Your upload is ready. Here is my deployment URL and <laughs> This is like the fastest way to deploy your universal React Native app. You can see it is up here on .expo.app. You can certainly change that subdomain and everything about it. But this basically takes like a minute to run four commands to get your application, including API routes up and running. Let's check it out if they actually work. So I should be able to go to slash API slash hello. And sure enough, I can get the result from my API route right here. So, you know, if you're using API routes, you could then set this up in your app JSON for Expo Router. You would probably set the URL. I should have another video on this on Galaxies on how you set like the base URL. And then you can make easy fetch requests against this in production. Let's check out a couple of other things. If we now go into my dashboard here in Expo, uh, let's see, this is not the one we're gonna go here to my hosting app. And in the hosting app, you should now find hosting down here. There's a little overview. So we got production deployment not yet configured. So we should probably do this in a second. But we got our recent deployment here. And for that deployment, you can now also check out a bunch of things. We get the requests, we get crashes. Uh, let's actually cause a crash. That would be funny as well. So let's go here. Oh, by the way, when you're ready to deploy to production, you can just run this command. Let's do this. Let's run EIS deploy prod. Uh, it's still in beta. Yeah, I know about that. Uh, this is creating my deployment, uploading assets, and then it is available almost instantly at hostingapp.expo.app. I wanted to show you how we can crash that. That was the whole point of this. So let's again open this up, hostingapp.expo. Let's go to API slash crash. API slash crash. This will cause a crash. Uh, now I really crashed. You can see this was the lock I initially had. If we now go back to our deployments, we should see my production deployment right here. All right, so here's a nice little handy timeline. This is available under crashes of your hosting. Now I really crashed. And this should actually, yeah, point exactly to the line of code. So you get sort of like 
the sentry feeling because they got of course the source map and the symbols here for your expo build so this is uh, able every, uh, to pinpoint every crash exactly to the line of code in your application where it crashed now it should only open up my editor at that line that would be pretty sweet as well so i highly recommend you just navigate around under hosting a bit you're going to see under requests you can see all the different requests coming in we already saw the crash analytics under metrics you can see some general hosting uh, metrics where your traffic is coming from this is really handy you get really a lot of information especially also if you dive into like the actual deployment and who's going to a certain deployment or crashes for that specific deployment it is really helpful honestly of course you're also able to define your custom domain so if you want to you could later uh, have this point to your own domain of course with some sort of verification I can't do this right now because I haven't set up like any DNS entries for this but like you probably used to on Vercel or Netlify you will be able to use your own domain or uh, change your subdomain of this to your liking now there are two more things that I want to mention one of them is that you might have some ENV variables in your local project so you might have like a .env file in here that will be used during the build. It is highly recommended that you in general keep them in EAS. So you can do like EAS environment push or pull. You can set environment variables straight to EAS. So under environment variables of your project, you could create a variable. Uh, I will just call this expo public test key. Uh, I'm gonna set the value to one, two, whatever. And this will now exist here. It will be available to all EAS builds. And if you run EAS ENV pull, it should actually bring these in. Uh, I don't know. Where did we do them? Under development or prod? But anyway, here we go. It immediately pulls down the ENV uh, from EAS. This is helpful because you really want to have one single point of truth and then you can like pull them, put them under git ignore locally. Otherwise, if you have a local ENV and the different in EAS, it's going to be challenging. But you could have this for dev, prod or different environments in general. The second thing is that this whole hosting also nicely ties into the workflow. You know, uh, in December, uh, Expo announced their workflow where you can put up custom YAML files in your project, you define different jobs, and they could run when you push to your repository. Uh, I tried this here as well. I honestly don't know if it works. Let's give it a try. Uh, updated response. If I do it like this uh, and try to trigger my uh, workflow like this so you can run this locally normally let's see what happens this using my workflow file uh, yeah it has no github repository so that's why it's failing but uh, under normal conditions and especially if it runs on the servers here this is pretty cool because you can imagine uh, if you set up the workflow if you then build your universal application the EIS workflow can build your native iOS app, it can build your native Android app, automatically upload them to iOS and Android. It can build the web version, including the API routes and the server actions and host them in EAS hosting. So you'll be able to really like go the full mile and cover everything that you need for universal applications, which is pretty cool to have it all in like one single place. No, some might ask why? Do we really need this? And probably those are the same at set up a custom fast lane script and a build server on a Mac Pro and say EIS is totally unnecessary. This hosting is made for Expo apps, especially universal React Native apps with Expo Router. Evan Bacon thinks we'll sooner than later all want to use server actions by default in Expo project. I won't have to make it the default. I think people will request it's the default. By the way, you'll soon hear more about that in our podcast episode. And this new hosting option is just another piece in the puzzle to make build react native universal apps as easy as possible for everyone it also opens the door to some really new ideas what about some rsc a b testing tool or maybe improved app analytics based on rsc who knows the potential for some new services definitely exists is expo now finally a competitor to vercel or netlify like i already said last year probably not yet but i think it's a possible scenario in the future what are your thoughts on eas hosting will you give it a try or do you think it's unnecessary let me know in the comments i think it's definitely a big bang right at the start of the year. And, and by the way, check out my big bang on galaxies.dev, our brand new zero to hero React Native mission to build and ship your first React Native app in no time. If you also need some help building out your native expo app, 
Check out this video about all the different ways how you can build your app, not only with EIS. And I will catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon.